Hey everyone, so today is a very special day. It is Mother's Day. And today is the day where we get to honor our moms. And so if you haven't got a mom in your life, it's a day where you get to honor your gran or your aunt. So I'm hoping that you guys have already spoiled them this morning. You made them breakfast in bed, some egg and bacon, or gave them a foot massage. Uh, but you, if you haven't done anything yet, don't worry, you still have time. Um, but what we've done is we've asked a few of you guys some questions about your mom um, and we got some really cool answers so check this video out ice cream cake that she made for bread today macaroni cheese and fried chicken she makes very good mayonnaise and chocolate cake Impossible pudding. Curry. Orange cake. A Rice Krispie treat. The pasta and mince that she makes. Bratina soup. Spaghetti. Spaghetti and meatballs. The chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, her nose is like creaky and she shouts loud. Dad cries. Mm. <gasps> I can't explain it. She's good at teaching her school with little kids and exercises, cooking biryani and curry. My mommy is making very good pasta. Making biscuits! And taking care of us. Sport. She's been amazing at it since she was a child. Cooking supper. Mom's amazing. She's good at everything. Well, that was fun. I feel like I know a lot about your moms now. But we're about to go into a time of worship. So why don't you stand up onto your feet, move your arms around, jump up and down, get the blood flowing because we're going to praise Jesus together. Come on, let's jump, 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 jump.
going to jump straight into our story for today. Okay, are you ready? Now, when I think of some of the important things in life, a few things come to mind. You know, eating your veggies, even the peas, um, brushing your teeth, even on lockdown, very important. Wearing your seatbelt, although I feel like at the moment you haven't had to be doing much of that, but it will come. But most importantly, this is the thing that should come to mind first that we need to obey our parents and that is our lesson for today i think the parents are stoked our lesson for today is obeying our parents now maybe being on lockdown and being with your parents all day every day that your parents are now your teachers and your parents and everything that might be proving to be a little bit more difficult than usual but at the end of the day God commands us to obey our parents. But now maybe just in case you aren't staying with your parents, you can replace parents with anyone that you're staying with, the person in charge of you, the person that's responsible for you and looking after you. So now let's just go back to basics. What does it actually mean to obey our parents? Well, plain and simply put, obeying your parents is, well, first of all, doing what they say. Maybe that's making your bed, just doing your schoolwork, raking the garden, and it's also stopping what they ask you to not do, like picking your nose, hitting your sister, forgetting to make your bed, all those things. And that basically is what it is. What it is, is basically doing what they say you should do and not doing what they say you shouldn't. All right, we've got the what covered. So why, why should we obey our parents, you're thinking? Well, let me tell you three reasons why. Reason number one is because the Bible tells us to. The Bible gives 
gives kids an instruction, a responsibility to obey their parents. And so if the Bible says it, it means it and we obey it. Second thing, it pleases God and that means it makes him happy when we obey our parents because ultimately we're obeying him because he gave us the command to obey our parents. So by obeying our parents, we're making God happy. And I'm not sure about you, but I aim to make God happy and I love to make God happy, as challenging as it might be sometimes. Third point, obeying our parents protects us. When we stay within the boundaries of what our parents are telling us to do and what God's called us to do, we're safe. But if we step out of those boundaries, well, I think it's pretty obvious, we get in trouble. So remember, the important things in life, eat your veggies, brush your teeth, wear your seatbelts, but most importantly, above all else, obey your parents. Hey guys, so we are going into today's object lesson. And as you can see, my table is full of equipment and we're gonna learn something with the things that I have on this table. So I'm gonna tell you what I have on the table and then I'm gonna tell you what each of these things represent. So we have number one, a jug of water. Number two, we have a pink sponge. Number three, we have a pink sieve as well. And number four, we have a funnel. And then we have a cool bowl. It's real big and it's gonna be used for something really cool. So number one, right? This jug and the water inside represents God's word. Another word for that is the Bible. This represents the Bible and these three items represent three different groups of people, right? So I'm gonna start with the first one, which is a funnel, right? And I'm gonna show you guys something cool. This water and the jug represents God's word. So we're gonna pour the water, which represents God's word through the funnel and let's see what happens. How many of you guys know what's gonna happen? Maybe tell the person next to you what's gonna happen and let's see who is correct. Okay, here we go. Okay, so as we see, it goes in the one side and out the other side. It rushes really quick. And this represents the first group of people who hear God's word and it goes in this ear and out the other ear. If you are a student, your parent or a teacher would have said this to you. When they are talking, you need to listen and it shouldn't go in one ear and out the other. But the first group of people, that is exactly what happens. And we do not want to be like them where the water just kind of runs through and we hear it, but we don't take anything in at all. Okay, now we're gonna go on to the second group of people. And I wanna see what the second group of people do with God's word. Can you tell the person next to you what you think is going to happen when I pour the water which represents God's word through this? We're gonna take a look and we are going to see. This is group number two. And we pour some of the water which is God's word all around and we see that it goes through pretty fast as well but if you look in here you'll see that there's still some water around and some water in the middle because it is caught in between but if we start to hit it eventually all the water drops out now group number two if we liken this to the word of god is that people hear god's word they read god's word but they only take in a little, so it doesn't go completely out. It's like kind of halfway in and they take a little bit of it. But when times get tough and maybe they only take in God's word once every couple of months, they forget it and then lose sight of that. So we do not want to be group number two either. And I'm going to take group number three, the pink sponge that looks like a, a flower type of thing. And I'm going to pour some of God's word over it and I'm gonna pour the sponge in here. And this is kind of what we wanna do. We all wanna be group number three, where we soak in God's word and we retain it. And the people around us can see the effects. And we get to spread God's word because we've taken it in just like that sponge. We do not wanna be group number one. We do not wanna be group number three. We all, I mean group number two, we all wanna be group number three, which is soaked in God's word and we can give it to others. So now we have it, how we learned that the jug represents God's word and we all wanna be the sponge which retains God's word so that we can share it with others. 
So guys, when God's word instructs us to obey our parents, we need to soak that in and let it change from the inside out. And you know what? Sometimes that's not easy and God knows that. That's okay. We can go to him for help and we can ask him, be like, Lord, I'm battling. Would you please give me the strength to do this? And also to be aware of when I'm not doing it so I can be better. So there are many stories in the Bible of some crazy acts of obedience, but we're going to look at one today that's going to blow your mind. So check this out. Our story today is found in Genesis 22. Now, let me just say that this story teaches us the ultimate level of obedience. Before we get into the story, let me give you a bit of background information. Our story begins with Abraham and Sarah. Now, Abraham and Sarah were both very old. And when I mean very old, I mean very, very old, like older than your grandparents. And they could not have children. But God promised them that they would have a child, and they did. He blessed them with a child, and they named him Isaac. Abraham spent a lot of time with Isaac, teaching him how to love and obey God. And he made sure that Isaac knew that he was a very special child, and that he had been promised by God. As Isaac grew, he learned how to worship God, just as his father Abraham did. In our story today, we're going to see the crazy faith and obedience that both Abraham and his son Isaac had. Because remember, it takes faith to obey. We have to trust God knows best, even when it doesn't make sense to us. Abraham. Yes, Lord, here I am. Abraham, I want you to take your son Isaac to the region of Moriah. When you get there, I want you to sacrifice him there as a burnt offering to me. I'll show you which mountain I want you to take him to. Whoa! Can we pause there for a second? God just told Abraham to sacrifice his son. But Abraham was obedient. And we're going to see how even Isaac was obedient. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took his two servants with him and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him to go. And on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his two servants, Wait here a while with the donkeys, while the boy and I go over there to that mountain to worship. We'll be back in a moment. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and gave Isaac the fire and the knife to carry. As the two of them went on, Isaac spoke up and said to his dad, Dad? Yes, my son? I see we have the firewood and the fire, but there's no lamb to sacrifice. The Lord will provide, my son. When they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built the altar and arranged the wood on it. He took Isaac, laid him over the wood, and then tied him up. He then took the knife to kill his son. But at that moment, an angel of the Lord called out to him and told him not to touch the boy. When Abraham looked up, he saw a ram caught in the bushes, and he sacrificed it instead. God spoke to Abraham again, saying, Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Now, if that is a next level faith and obedience, then I don't know what is. Abraham trusted God so much that he didn't question God. He simply obeyed. And Isaac obeyed his dad, even when things didn't make sense either. When we obey our heavenly father and our earthly parents, things will go well for us. We may not always understand at the time, but we can know that God always wants what is best for us. And a lot of that starts with obeying our parents. All right, everyone, it is time for our memory verse for today. And it is found in Colossians 3 verse 20. And it goes like this. Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Now, as we learned earlier, we obey our parents for three reasons. One, well, the Bible tells us to. Two, it pleases God and well, we want to make him happy. And three, it protects us So stay in the boundaries and you're safe. Now, here's the big thing with this obeying your parents. Sometimes, a lot of the time, we might not understand why our parents are making us do or not do something. We can get 
quite frustrated because we don't understand why they're saying something and we're like, mom, dad. But here's the thing that we can rest assured in. If the Bible says something, it's because it means it and it is right every single time. So even when you don't understand something or it's frustrating you, just know the Bible told me to, it's gonna please God if I obey them. And so God, would you give me a good heart and a good attitude in obeying my parents? Right, now for some cool action so you can stand to your feet, shake it out, we're gonna get warmed up and I'm gonna test your skills today. So I hope you're ready. All right, it goes like this. First word, children. I want you to point to a children. That could be you if you're on your own or a sibling or a cousin or whoever you're with. Or if there's no one, you want to point to a neighbor or like a virtual friend somewhere far away. That's cool too. Children, you're going to point, obey your parents. Now in everything, I want you to try and do a full 360 degree turn. That means start from here, jump and end you like this. Watch in everything. Cool. Okay. Okay. You try three, two, one, jump. Nice. For this pleases the Lord. Right. All together. Let's go. Children point to someone, obey your parents and get ready, get ready. Everything for this pleases the Lord. And that's found in Colossians 3 verse 20. Okay. One last time. And I want to see those jumps looking good. Three, two, one. Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Colossians 3 verse 20. Bam, you guys have got that. You can practice that, practice your jumps and see if you can jump more than a whole time around. That's your challenge. Well, everyone, it's that part of the service where we get to slow things down a bit. Let's take some time to fix our hearts, to fix our minds on Jesus. Take some time in this next worship song to tell him how thankful you are, how grateful you are, and how much you love him for what he's done for you and for me. Jesus, you're my everything. I give you my whole heart. Nothing in this world is as big as you are And even when I'm scared I know that you are there In the deepest, darkest nights You're there next to me So I'll stay Is yours. I will worship you alone. 
All that I am is yours Whatever I am yours All that I am is yours I will worship you alone All that I am is yours Whatever I am yours So I'll say Wow, what an amazing time of worship. Maybe this morning you felt like you want to give your life to Jesus. We want to lead you in a prayer. So if that's you this morning, I wonder if you can close your eyes and just bow your head and repeat these words after me. The reason we're going to do this is because the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ saved you, He can do that. So this morning, let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes, and repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for taking my place and giving me the opportunity to have a new life. From this day forward, I want to be more like you. Teach me to be like you. I want to live my life the way that you have called me to. From this day forward, I am a child of God. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer friends, we want to celebrate with you. This is the most important decision that you'll ever make in your whole life. Well done. Over to Tash now. Amen. So guys, I have a few things for you guys in closing and I'm going to give you guys a list of things that you might need for the object lesson so that you guys can practice it in your week and have some fun with that. The things that you're going to be needing is a jug of water, you're gonna be needing a sponge, you are going to be needing a sieve, and you are going to be needing a bowl as well as a funnel. This is something that you could do by yourself, but it'll probably be better if you have an adult around. Awesome, and on top of that, you guys can practice that memory verse mm -hmm. found in Colossians 3 verse 20. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, right. I have got a Sunday fun day challenge for okay. you for today. Okay. Yep. It is called an alphabet scavenger hunt. Ooh, sounds interesting. So what you need to do is get a piece of paper, exam pad, white paper, and write down every letter of the alphabet. And then your goal okay. is to go and try and find an item or an object or a thing in your house Whoa. that begins with that letter. Nice. Okay. You can do like a time trial or if you've got like a sibling compete against yep. them, but let's see who can do the fastest time to complete their alphabets. Okay, that sounds like a lot of fun. Also, please continue sending us videos, pictures of what you guys are doing with the, on the WhatsApp number um, that will be coming across the screen. Um, as Tash has said before, this is a two-way friendship, so you guys get to see us and we absolutely love seeing you guys as well, so please continue to do that. Yeah, and on that note, Coming up right now, we're going to show you a few videos oh. of your friends from across the world worshiping Jesus and having so much fun. So take a look at this. Maybe you'll spot yourself there. Above, not on earthly things. 
Well, that was really cool. I just think it's amazing how there are so many people around the world, kids your own age, who are just going on this journey together with all of us, which is yeah. just so, so cool. So last but definitely not least, we have our discussion slab, which will be coming up after this that you can chat through with your parents. So grab everyone together and have yeah. a good time chatting and praying together. We love you guys mm. and we will see you very, very soon. So remember today is Mother's Day, so don't forget to spoil your moms. And if you're thinking of ways to spoil her, I'm going to give you a challenge this morning. Okay, so my challenge is for you to tidy your room as clean as you can make it and to do it without her asking. Okay, so I'm not saying just shove your clothes in your cupboard. You must fold them neatly, sweep the floor, maybe throw away those Easter wrappers that have been there since Easter um, and just make it look spotless. Okay, because I'm sure that will bless your mom. All right, I hope you have a beautiful Sunday.